Hey now, this is the Rob from 1061 Kiss FM, and I'm here with uh, one of our website contributors. Hey guys, Steve. Uh, you'll know me from the website 1061evansville.com. And you may recognize that voice from the Rob's radio show with Cat Michaels. Uh, Steve and I are here because we are now known as the 16-bit superstars, aren't we, Steve? We are, yes. And we are going to be contributing uh, a weekly video blog about video games to the website 1061evansville.com. Uh, Steve and I are both huge fans of video games. Yes, we are. I have been for longer than I can literally remember. And what we want to do is we want to introduce ourselves here in this first episode. Uh, tell us a little, tell you a little bit about who we are and uh, what kind of games we're into and how we got into games in the first place. And then at the end we want to talk about uh, the video games that actually got us in to the world of video games. So I don't mind getting things started, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, I am 31 years old. I cannot remember a time in my life where I didn't have video games. I have older siblings. Uh, I have a brother who's 10 years older than me who um, had a Nintendo in the house uh, when it first came out, who was into video games. And uh, my older brother Chuck is probably the root of my video game adoration. And uh, we did have all the Atari stuff, although I wasn't a huge Atari fan. What got me into uh, video games was Nintendo and uh, Nintendo games and the NES and playing them with my brother, playing them with my dad. And so I've been playing since I would say I was two years old. I remember um, uh, being around two years old, so 85 when the Nintendo came out in the U.S. Uh, was when I got hooked. What about you? Um, I started, well, I've got about nine years on you. I'm 39, getting ready, getting ready to turn 39, 95. Um, my first system was the Atari 2600. Okay. Um, so when we got that, you know, way back in 79, 80, um, I mean, I remember playing that. I mean, it, it's like a dinosaur now. It is. But it was just a, it was a huge thing for our family to get that. The great thing about video games is that they age very well. Yeah. And uh, people still have, like, for a lot of technology, something that's 30 years old uh, is ancient. But for video game players and fans, it's still beloved and very relevant stuff. So you have been really video gaming since before I was born. Yeah. What were some of those early favorites, Steve? What got you into loving um, games? Um, when I got the Atari, probably my favorite is the one that came with it. It was called Combat. It was a series of like different like tanks and biplanes, and it was like four different games in one. But I'm just sitting here playing these on my TV, and I'm not believing it. The game that really got me into it. My older brother is ten years older than me, and he worked at Pizza King at the time um, in the Louisville area. All right. And they had a sit down Donkey Kong game. Oh, like a cabinet, or yeah, like, like like the cabinet, like the cabinet version. Sure. And I would go in there to visit him, and I would spend an hour playing that game for you know like a dollar fifty. <laughs> right and, on. I mean, so that that started the gaming. That was before even at the household. I'd go visit my brother, and that was it. You know, when I was extremely young, in fact, I can barely remember this, but we had um, arcade cabinets in our basement. My dad was big into video games, and uh, we had a Pac Man. Uh, we had an arcade cabinet called Tron. Uh, yeah. Have you played the Tron arcade yes, cabinet? I have. We had it in our basement growing up, and we also had a rotation of three different pinball machines. We had pool table and air hockey. We had a really cool game room. Wow. And when I think of my youngest memories of video games, I think of that finished basement that we had with all. It was just like a game lair, and it yeah. was great. And I grew up in one of those lairs. Um, we had the Atari. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite Atari game, it would be. Uh, Pitfall. Oh, yes. Pitfall was like, because I love Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. and I like that jungle setting, but it was colorful, yeah. and it had like a person you could see, like a sprite that wasn't just like a dot, you know? Yeah. It had like a human, I think his name was Pitfall Sam or Pitfall Jack. He had a name. Yeah, he had a name. I can't remember what it was. I want to say it was Sam, but either way, uh, Pitfall would be my favorite Atari game, but my real memories... Uh, of my formative years in video games came on those gray cartridges on the NES. Yes. And I brought a few with me to talk about uh, that really hooked me into gaming. Um, the first game is kind of obvious. It became the pack-in for the NES. Okay. And this is the uh, combination of Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, and, uh, let's see, World Class Track Me with the Power yes. Pad. Um, Mario is my guy. Mario, to me, is uh, the be-all, end-all 
of video game characters, and he got me into um, video games. Yeah. You know, I remember playing the game with my brother Chuck, and he knew all the secrets, and when he'd find a warp zone, like back then before the internet, man, finding a warp zone was huge the yeah. first time. Um, a few other games I wanted to, to at least give uh, some honorable mentions to. Um, when Mario upgraded to Super Mario 3, yeah. the, the steps this took... Now, I played Super Mario 2, but I never loved Super Mario 2. I feel like this was the first game that I loved. Uh, Super Mario 3 on the NES, what it did to that franchise made it a household name. And not only that, do you remember the anticipation of waiting for this game to come out? How big of a deal they made this on television and in the movies? I remember that because the movie The Wizard, that was where it got its first glimpse of right. daylight. And yeah, I just wanted to play that game so, so bad. So this game came out, I want to say, in 1990. I was six at the time. I just couldn't put this thing down. Uh, a few other games uh, I want to mention here. Um, I have a big love for adventure games. Mm -hmm. And um, while I didn't fall in love with this game on the Nintendo, I fell in love with it on the computer. Oh, wow. This is, have you ever played Maniac Mansion? It's been, it's been a minute, but yeah, the, I have. The point-and-click adventure got me into computer gaming. And from there opened up, while I'm not a big PC gamer now, when I was a kid, when you had to put in like five floppy disks, you know? Oh, yeah. I was a big fan of, uh, I still, the, the, the Maniac Mansion series is uh, yeah. huge to me. But just that point and click style of storytelling yeah. and infusing humor into storytelling, uh, I thought Maniac Mansion did the game very well. And then one more thing I think is very important to mention, especially because we are the 16 bit superstars. Yeah. Um, I was in fourth grade. I guess I was in third grade, actually, when I got my Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And what made the Super Nintendo unique, and of course the pack-in for that oh. game was Super Mario World. Yeah. Still one of my top five favorite video games of all time, Super Mario World. The Nintendo was my family's or my brother's. When I got my Super Nintendo, Steve, it was mine. And oh, when wow. I, hooked, I hooked it up to my TV, and this was like my first game in a way. Oh, wow. nice. So this, to me, is a very important game in my video game upbringing. Yeah. So, Steve, do you have any games you want to mention to uh, uh, to talk about in our first episode here? Um, I got a few. Um, unfortunately, kind of moved a lot when I was in my younger gaming days, so I don't have a lot of them here. Um, Rob brought one in for me that I could show. Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Um, I game. felt I felt like a man so much when I first played the first three fights, and then you finally get to Mike Tyson, and he shows you how much of a man you're not when you're playing this game. Okay, where you say Mike Tyson shows you're not a man, Glass Joe shows me that I'm not a man. Oh, yeah. Because I, this game, don't let it fool you, this is not a boxing game, per se. This is a pattern development game. It's a, yeah. it's a game about recognizing patterns and then uh, answering those patterns, and it is still a game that gives me a run for my money. I will never be able to beat Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I have, to this day, never beat this. I and I've only seen Mike Tyson one time. Let me get that straight, too. <laughs> That's impressive to me. Uh, I have friends who have beaten that game, and recently on our website, 1061evansville.com, there's a kid who beat it blindfolded. I saw, you, yeah, I saw that video. Was that not amazing? That, yeah, unbelievable. Uh, so, uh, are there more you want to mention, or is that the big Donkey Kong and Punch-Out? Um, Donkey Kong and Punch-Out, and then for the Super Nintendo, Street Fighter 2 was just... Oh, the, yes. Like, end-all, be-all of games. I could sit there and be the superhuman fighting machine... Who's that, your character in that game? I'm um, Ryu was. He uh, was. For me, it's Chun Li. Oh yeah. If it's nice. not, if it's not Chun Li, it's Blanca. Yeah. But that game is great. I was more of a Mortal Kombat guy, but Street Fighter laid the foundation for the modern day 2D fighting game. Yeah. So those are cool. Uh, we're not going to take up much more of your time, but we do want to encourage you to come back to the website 1061evansville.com weekly. If you ever want to hear us talk about something, please shoot us an email. The email address, uh, the Rob at 1061evansville. I'll try to put that on the bottom there. We're working on an intro. We're going to try to find a better studio too, or uh, maybe a better uh, set background. But this is episode one. It's kind of like our pilot uh, for Steve and of course the Rob. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We are the 16-bit superstars. We will see you next Wednesday. Thanks, guys.